In this video, we are going to be installing the brand new 2023 infotainment system. We're going to be putting on a brand new screen with the new touch buttons, as well as a brand new head unit with ID6 installed and full screen Apple CarPlay, the new iDrive controller, which comes in the new Mini Coopers, and adding a whole bunch of other features. This video is just the start of a series of many videos where we're going to be completely facelifting the interior of my car to the new 2023 model. So make sure that you like, subscribe, that way you don't miss any future uploads. My name is Ethan and welcome to Car Creations. So right here we have the old infotainment system and it runs iDrive 4. It has no functionality other than you can play your music through Bluetooth. So first things first before any retrofit is make sure that you have all your tools together and we're going to lay them all out for you here. We're also going to be able to include links to it all in the description. All right let's show you the kit that we have to install into this. First of all we have the head unit, so this is the computer that connects to the screen. On this computer, we have installed the latest software, so ID6, iDrive 6, as well as full screen Apple CarPlay and Android mirroring if you have an Android. We have a iDrive controller for your car, and you have this beautiful brand new touch screen with the uh, frame as well as trim, and then you have all the wiring that you need. So your Bluetooth, wiring to get from the screen to the head unit, wiring from USB to the head unit. If you're interested, you can get the GPS dongle that will help you get navigation. I did get one little optional extra not to do with this kit at all, a USB-C that is also powered. So this takes the place of, in my car I have a USB-A port as well as an auxiliary port. I don't need any, either one of those anymore. For this upgrade we teamed up with Beamer Fixes to supply a complete upgrade kit for your car both coded as well as installation support. The kit that you get, as we have before us here, includes all brand new equipment, and if you're interested in it, please reach out to us on Instagram at carcreationsyt, or at email at carcreationsyt at gmail.com, and we'd be happy to help you. All right, so before you do anything, you have to make sure that you disconnect the battery. So we're just gonna open the hood. Open up the hood, and then right here we just have a little bolt. I have my uh, finger loose right now because I keep working on this car. Move the battery cable and then just put it somewhere safe, and now we can work on the car. Woo! So the first thing is, is to get this piece off here. So first thing we have to do is remove these little pieces down here. And what we have to do is get a trim remover tool to pop them out. So we take the trim remover tool, and we just have to pop it underneath these, and pry them out. Make sure you save them, because you will need them to put on the new unit. We're gonna take this piece off up here. So once again, we're gonna take a towel, put it here so you don't wreck anything, pop it under, and you can lift it up. There we go. Look at that, pops right out. So right here and right here, we have two Torx 15 screws. We just remove those two and we're ready to go. Way down far, in most cars, there is a little tab that we can push down. Now it's kind of hard to see with the camera. Now you push down the tab, and we should be able to wiggle this out. Just go slide, side by side, being careful, because this tab will break. There we go. Here's the tab that was uh, sitting there. And if you can see, it pokes right through here and comes out right there. So we just carefully lie this forwards. Now we have access to the infotainment system. So now with this laid forwards, our next step is going to be disconnecting the old system and getting it ready to add the new system. So what we're gonna be doing is taking the screen off and disconnecting it. First things first, we're just gonna go through and remove all these plugs. Now each one has a little tab that you can press. So this red one has a little tab at the top, pull that up. And then you slowly, slowly wiggle it free. There you go. And this one here actually has a little tad front. So I just got a little screwdriver here with a tiny little Torx bit on the end. It's just small enough, almost like a pin. Got it out. So on this connector is a little like outcropping on it. Put this down beside it and just pulled against it and lift it up. And I was just able to work the entire thing up. Now for the rest of them, they're actually somewhat easy. For one to turn on the hazard, you just pinch the top. Pulls right out. Buttons, I think. Once again, you just pinch the top, pulls right out. And then the one for down here, little tabs on the side, pinch them, wiggle side to side, and they pull right up. And voila, we have the old screen off. All right, so now we're gonna get to the head unit itself. So it's easier to disconnect all the cables. We can actually pull it out a little bit. It's actually quite easy. You just undo the Torx screws on the side here, Torx 15, like we had before. Don't drop your screws. I have a habit of dropping screws and uh, not good. Now these Torx 15 are different sizes, so make sure you separate them in your uh, cup holders. <laughs> there we go. And then you just pull it forward like so. And then we have access to take this off. Here we have the quad lock, so we're just gonna 
pull this forward and it comes right out. There we go. These ones here are quite easy like we saw before. Once you get the tablet top, you just pinch down and you pull up. Don't pull too hard. Just slowly wiggle around while you're pulling on the tab. Else you can wiggle it right out the head unit. And then one for the screen, same thing. All right, so then these ones for the FM radio. They're a bit more finicky. So for these, what you have to do is you lift up these white sliders and then you have a little tab. Pull it forwards and then you can pull down on it. One, two, three, and voila! Head unit's free. Our next thing that we wanna do is go all the way down here and we're gonna be taking off old auxiliary and, and USB ports. To do so, it's actually quite easy. We're just going to get the trim remover tool and pop the piece out. But I'm just gonna move the camera down so you can see. First of all, you take off this. There we go. Disconnect, slowly pull out. And then you have the cables behind. So I'm just gonna, once again, poke this down here and try to get it out. That was easier. And so we're just gonna take this out the back. So there's little tabs right here and right here. Pull it through. And then we just have to replace this with our new one. So you just take this and then we get this, put it in. Snaps beautifully into place. Now back to in here. This uh, cable here that we disconnected. Well, that one we actually have to replace because the other end doesn't fit in the new head unit. So we just have to put in the new USB cable. The darker one goes down. All right, time for the iDrive controller. This is probably a very unflattering angle of me, but I don't care. Once again, trim remover tool. <laughs> you almost don't need it. Look at that, it came up. Uh, sorry, it's this card's a bit grimy. Part of this series, we're actually gonna be taking it somewhere and getting it cleaned out beautifully. Once you get this out, then there's just two torque screws. So we're just gonna unscrew those. For the iDrive controller, you just lift it up and forward. You can just wiggle it. There we go. And then we have a little connector on the back. There we go. So for this connector, I just had to pull really hard. That's all I had to do. All right, time for the new one. So this one has just more features. Normally you get them with either a white dot in the middle or just plain black like this one. So we are just gonna plug this one in. There we go. Put it in there. And then we can just screw it down. Not least, not last either. We're gonna put the trim around it. Connect to the top, push down. And there we go. New iDrive controller on. And it looks a lot better in my opinion. I don't like that yellow. So we're gonna snap this piece on over here. So we got the one connected and then we just plug in the other one. And then you just have to carefully guide into the hole, move the wires around so they fit, and then just push in. Ah, oh, so it looks glorious. Time for the head unit. If you look in the front, we have all the features that we need. We have these, these two little round things here in the quad lock. Those are for the most cable, because we'll need that if we want to install a digital cluster. It's a bit bigger, so you may have to work on it a little bit. Take two in the fitting. Oh, there we go. Each car is different, but they all can take the head unit, so if it's not working, just try to figure out how to make it work. So what I'm going to do is take off these trim panels, not letting me get it in without that. Screw right here, and this screw right here. It's not even the trim that comes out, just the vent that comes out, that's kind of cool. And now it should be even easier to get this head unit in. What we're going to do is now is connect all the wires up. We're going to start with the USB. And you can see pretty easily where that USB goes. That goes right here, like in the Bluetooth. Okay, so we don't need to worry about these wires because those are the old USB wires, like in the, in the FM1, FM2. And make sure you push the tops down. So we have some other cables to add. Pink cable, this is going to be for the screen. And this right here is going to be for the Wi-Fi. So the WLAN, it's just to help your phone connect to Apple CarPlay, really. And so we can plug that into the WLAN. If you chose the upgrade for the GPS, or for the maps, you plug that over here. Sometimes people like route it up through here, so you can kind of sit up near the top. And then finally, after all that, you can put the quad lock in. And if you have any problems later with uh, it not working, turning on, normally it's the quad lock that's the issue. We can now get to the bit of putting back the head unit in. So we're just gonna lift it up, stuff all the wires down. Okay, so for the screen, we just need to connect these into the three ports on the bottom. First of all, we have our screen one in here for the buttons, one for the hazards. And finally, this one going to the screen itself. And just like that, you can put the screen back on. If you're not gonna upgrade your dash panel pieces, you just cut off these tabs right here and right here and push it really far in and that'll fit your car. You wanna push quite firmly. All right, so we're gonna code it and turn it on for the first time. And I'm gonna turn on the car. <laughs> that is so exciting. Look how good this looks. What you just have to do is go through and make sure that 
everything is all good. Connect Apple CarPlay and confirm. So CarPlay is working, so then we're gonna go back home and then we're gonna go and check Mini. And we're just gonna check to make sure that the vehicle stuff is all working. Um, check control, this tells us all of our errors. If the service required, okay, that's working. Okay, so what we have here is the brand new infotainment system. And in our previous videos, we just installed the 2018 and 2019 infotainment system but updated the software on it. This one, we have completely brand new equipment. We have the brand new screen with the nice touch sensitive buttons, as well as the green flush with the bezel. And then with this new infotainment also, we get this really cool ring around it that kind of gives like this dial effect. I'm super happy with it and it's looking fantastic. And then what we've also done is upgrade port down here to have USB type C. And that also is powered USB Type-C, so you can actually power your phone while you're working. Finally, we have the updated iDrive controller, and we have a bunch of different features on it, maps, media, and that just ties everything together and it looks really good. You'll see in this dash that we've actually added some other features over the course of making this video. And if you take a look at the videos that are coming out next week and the weeks following, you'll see us install those. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that content coming up, because as you can see, it's looking really good. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any comments or questions down below and we'll answer them as soon as possible. Most of all, we hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. You are ready. Yeah, I've been ready for the past 13 seconds. Oh my goodness, this guy, I tell you. All right, you ready? Sure. All right. I'm ready for the last 29 seconds. <laughs>